Haley Barber. Haley, thank you for coming. We are so pleased that you're here. Thank you for having me. And you will be looking for a car that is your favorite in the show, and you will be giving them a trophy. Yes, ma'am. I'm honored to do so. Are you a native of Pelham? I am. I've lived in Pelham and grown grown up there and graduated from Pelham High School in 2012. Were you born there? I was not. I was born in Augusta, Georgia, and we lived, we've we lived all over the South up until I was in the fifth grade. I moved to Alabama. Oh, my gosh. You are just so beautiful. We tried to come for the crowning, yes. and we couldn't find a parking place. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I almost yes. saw you win your crown. Oh. <laughs> well, I wish you could have been there. I would have loved to meet you afterwards. Yeah. Okay. I will be, I have a book for you uh, before you leave here that I will give to you about the town, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy your day here. You're lucky. Usually it's sweltering hot, but we have a breeze today. Uh-huh. Yes, I've been. I was told before I came, wear your hair in a ponytail, wear a very light dress because it will be hot. But yes, we've been blessed today. It's been overcast, so been nice weather. When is the competition for Miss America? It's in three months. The crowning will be on September 11th this year. Yes, I was crowned Miss Alabama in June, on June 11th, and I'll hopefully we'll be crowned Miss America. So much fun today. Oh, we're so glad to have you here, honey. You're a beautiful representative of Alabama. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.
Oh, good. 
your 25 Dodge. Uh, tell us a little bit about this truck. This is a beauty, too. When did you get this? I, I built this truck, I bought this truck in 2000 and worked on it till about 2002, and I've been driving it ever since. It's a daily driver. Uh, my wife and I traveled in it till the grandkids come along, and so I built the Dodge basically for my grandkids. You had to have another seat. Yeah, I needed to, I needed a big seat because there are three of them now. Well, there's two to start with, three now, and uh, it's just a hobby for me. I've I've enjoyed myself a lot, and I don't know how to do nothing else. That's the thing that impressed me, Dave. Um, most people, they put so much money, time, and energy into these beautiful old vehicles, and then they let them sit in the garage. I, I just, you know, my stuff's really not show quality, but they're good drivers, and they've been a lot of fun. We've been downtown New Orleans and them, been to the beach quite a few times, up in Tennessee, over in Georgia. This truck's probably got a little over 40,000 miles on it since I built it, and the Dodge is probably close to 20,000, but we travel in it now because we can put the three grandkids in the back and they can play their games and we go on down the road. <laughs> what fun. And you've also, we're looking at these photos, those lucky grandchildren have a vehicle that Grandpa built for them. I spent about a year doing it. Uh, I wanted it to just look like an old model Ford or Chevrolet truck. Really didn't care. But I wanted them to have something that I'd done. And in fact, I've got another one at home that I built for my daughter that's a full-fledged dune buggy with roll bars and everything, but it's small. And uh, she but I still got it, so I well, got a yard full of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, your grandchildren, it looks like when you finish that, now these photos are when you finished it for them. Uh-huh. Yeah, they, that's when I built it. And uh, How old were they then? One looks about two or three, the youngest. The oldest one is, well, she was six, and the youngest one was four when I built it. And they... Uh, they thought it was pretty special, but the biggest mistake I made in it, I didn't make it big enough for me to get into and drive. <laughs> I sat on the back of the seat. I, I gained some extra weight for some reason, but, you know, I really wanted to do it for them. They're basically, them and my granddaughter, or my, my daughter, uh, they're the only family I got left. All my folks is gone, and, you know, if I do something that they like down the road, well, I'll be happy with it. Well, this is going to be truly an heirloom, this right here. I'm, I can see your great-grands in that, Dave, can't you? Well, they drove it, too. When I taught them how to drive, I had it in the garage, and I had the wheels up off the ground where it wouldn't go nowhere, and I showed them how to crank it. It's electric start. and Got headlights and taillights and tape deck and the so they had a simulated automobile. Well, I put it in there, you know, and, and when I got at Kelsey, she's the oldest one, and got her to show her how it would work, it's got a, a three-speed regular transmission and a two-speed low transmission. So I put it all down in low and showed them how to work the clutch, and down the driveway they went, and then from then on they drove it till they got too big to get in it like me. But the great-grands will be able to have that. And um, that was cute the way you modeled this after a little truck. You know those antique cars like at uh, Greenfield Village in Dearborn, Michigan, um, that they have for the children to ride? They're like this. But this is more a truck. And tell us about the bed of that thing. Uh, it dumps electrically. Uh, it's got turn signals and four-way flashers and they rode it a lot at night in the summertime around the garden, and, you know, we, we enjoyed getting to see them do it, and I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to do it for them and be able to watch them and watch them growing up. And what, about what year was it when you finished that? Oh, gosh. Probably about 20 years ago because that little one looks to be two or three, and you said she's in high school now. Yeah, it was, it was more than 15 years ago, I know, because 
I think Kelsey was six, which is the oldest, and Allie's the next, and I believe she was four. And uh, they thought it was a big deal, and I enjoyed it too. So. It is a big deal. <laughs> Any child would absolutely adore that. I've well, taken it to a few shows in the past, and, uh, and the little kids, they like it, so we just put them up in the seat and let the mom and daddy take their pictures and, and stuff like that. Like I say, it, none of my stuff show quality, but it sure is fun to play with. Well, I think it's remarkable, and I just could not believe that beautiful 25, you said Dodge Brothers. Again, t uh, tell us, uh, Dave, when you acquired that car, that 25 Dodge. Oh, the reason I acquired it was the grandkids. And I told my wife, I said, I'm going to look around and find an old four-door car. I don't really care what kind it is or nothing that we can ride them in because they want to go with us. But anyway, I found that car. I knew about the car before I bought it. Is it an Alabama car? I bought that car out of Summerton. But now I think right here. Right here. It had changed hands two or three times. But uh, I started taking it down and uh, got it all back together. And eventually about a year and a half, two years. I, I didn't keep up with dates. I did keep a little picture record of it. And uh took me between a year and a half, two years to get it going and, and what I, kind of motor did you put in there everything Dave? in this car is gm late model and it's got disc brakes and air conditioner and sunroofs uh tape decks the thing you'd want in an old travel car and uh you know it's it was something i wanted to do for them so i put plugs behind the back of the front seat so when they hop in there the first thing they do is plug them games in and we go <laughs> i take grandkids today i was surprised now that's a, really a luggage rack on top right and it's off of a, a wrecked uh, a salvage car a blazer uh, do you actually put luggage up there for a long trip no ma'am we don't do that but I've had people ask me about it, and I say it's a 1925 SUV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. Um, and that back, that little, uh, what is, that was actually the trunk in those days? I put that on. It didn't come on there. I made that, and uh, the box come from Walmart. But I carry my jack, my spare, a few tools or things like that. When you're out on the road, you might need and. It, it's in a receiver hitch, and you can just unpin it and take it off, but I leave it on the car most of the time because we get ready to go. We'll check everything out. and get, If we've got gas money, it likes gas. <laughs> <laughs> not, not too economical. <laughs> it's a 355 that I built myself, and uh, it's part of two or three different motors, but it seems to do a good job with the old car, but 13, 14 miles a gallon on the road, that's about it. <laughs> Okay, you look great while you're doing that. <laughs> yeah, enjoy. We've, we've really had a good time with the old car, and my wife, she likes to go some, too. And, and what's her name? Zelda. Zelda oh. oh, Zelda. And my gosh, just like the great Gatsby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that is perfect, Dave. So, Zelda Frazier. 45 years. And she goes along with you, and she's a good wife because she lets you have your expensive toys. Well, you know, if, if somebody calls and wants to know where I'm at, she'll tell them he's out there in that garage, you know. And so she knows where I'm at. And, and like I say, we, we've been together 45 years, so I guess she's going to keep me now. I think so. I think you two make each other happy. Uh, Dave, on those trips, though, um, you said that box... Other 25 model cars seem to have those boxes. Yeah. Uh, they was, uh, in those years, the rock of jack and the lug wrenches and the things that you need, you had to pile them in the floor of the car. So when I built the car, I built it with a receiver-type trailer hitch on it, and then I just built the framework and went to Walmart and bought the box and put in it, and you can lock it, and it's waterproof, and about thirty dollars 
I, I'm a nut for old crazy stock parts, but. Quite the little genius. That is amazing. Uh, the mechanical things is all I know. I never uh, done anything else but work at the railroad and work on my own cars. Oh, what railroad were you, you with? Started off with the IC, and then I worked with Frisco, and then I worked for the Burlington Northern, and then I worked for the Burlington Northern Santa Fe, but it was all in one span. I, I spent 35 years at the railroad. And did you always live locally or travel around? Locally. We've always lived here. Boy, fortunate. Yeah, my, my wife grew up in a little town similar to Nauvoo. Reed, have you restored any other old vehicles other than the two you have right now? Uh, n no, ma'am, but I've done some work for some other people. I've, I've done a chassis on a 57 Chevrolet, and uh, that guy that was in that dump truck a while ago, i done work on his 57 Chevrolet. And but I about quit all of that. My age is caught up with me. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. You're still going strong. But, but these are just beautiful. And again, I am truly amazed that you built these things and you actually used them. That was my thing all along. I said if I was going to build one, I was going to drive it. So. And you're still winning trophies, too. It's uh, kind of strange, I guess, that surprised me the other day. I, that's the second. Well, the first one was the best, best of show for the Dodge, and then this one that Miss Alabama gave. And this truck here, I've got a best Ford trophy with it. But it's all been over the years, and there again, you know, we just go. Man, Dave, you're remarkable, and we're sure glad you came to Nauvoo. To the Nauvoo Car Show 2016, the big winner, the Miss Alabama Trophy, went to Dave Frazier for his 25 Dodge Brothers. Would you call that four-door sedan?